Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FACO module. We have nearly completed the FI and the CO part. Now we have been discussing few of the topics which uh, should be known to you how those have been used in a in a practical uh, SAP scenario. One of them which we will be taking up today is LSMW. LSMW which uh, is an abbreviated form of Legacy System Migration Workbench. In this part, we will be taking up the overview on LSMW, advantage and strengths of LSMW, then the SAP architecture of LSMW, convert data with LSMW in detail, then what are the different import methods we use that will be discussed, and then we'll be taking up a practical scenario where we'll be creating an LSMW step by step. So moving on first to what LSMW is all about on overview. LSMW full form is Legacy System Migration Workbench, an R3 based tool that supports data transfer from non-SAP systems to R3 system that is SAP system. And this is done once or periodically. The tool supports conversion of data. LSMW can be used for almost all the master data and transactions in SAP system. If you talk about LSMW in detail, it is a tool recommended by SAP that you can use to transfer data once only or periodically from a legacy system into the SAP R3 system. This is one of the very powerful tools available in SAP to upload large amount of data to the SAP system from a legacy system. This tool is comparable to ECAT but the advantage LSMW has over them is the amount of data processed in a single session is too high and too huge. Moreover, LSMW is easier to learn and execute. If we talk about general terms, whenever we go for any of the implementation projects, we are supposed to migrate the data from a legacy system which was being used earlier to the SAP system. And for that, you need to transfer or migrate a huge database from your legacy system to the SAP system. So to transfer those data or to migrate those data from one system, that particular system, legacy system to the SAP system, we use LSMW for a migration tool. Through LSMW, one can create master data, can create transactional data, and even can modify the existing master data within the SAP system. This tool is very powerful when some mass changes are to be carried out and no standard SAP transactions are available for those mass changes. There are few standard objects available in LSMW like examples are material master, vendor master, customer master or you can say purchasing info record, purchase orders etc. Using these standard objects, one can do mass data upload or even a mass transaction upload can also, also be done. Apart from LSMW, provides another functionality of recording the transaction and then carrying the, that out many times with large data. So what you can do is you can record a particular kind of a transaction and then you can go for carrying out multiple transactions on the basis of that particular template. Example for that can be mass deletion of purchase requisition, mass deletion of plan orders or even it could be mass upload of open items in the SAP system. So for creating simple projects, user can go to the transaction that is transaction code is LSMW and you can move on to the LSMW screen and then 
with different steps we can create the program for the upload that we will be doing as a practical example later on within the training part. So in a simple terms it can be said that whenever we go for any implementation project at the cutoff date we are supposed to upload the opening balances of customers, ledger, vendors, assets and even before uploading those transactions you need to create the, the master data like ledger master data or customer master data, vendor master data or asset master data. So those huge list of asset masters or any of the master data can be simply created with the help of LSMW and even later on those opening balances of these different master data can be uploaded as a cutoff date in the SAP system with the help of LSMW. So moving on to the next is what are the different advantages and strengths of LSMW? So why we should prefer LSMW comparing to any, any other tool? The basic simple advantages on the screen is part of SAP and therefore platform independent and LSMW is a part of SAP NetWeaver. It has a wide range of data conversion techniques which you will not find in any of the other tools like fixed values, transactions, ABAP coding can be done, even BAPI can be used to enhance those LSMW tool for a further levels as well. Then supports data transfer for the most of the important master and transaction data. So it basically covers all those transactions or any of the transactions or master data within the SAP in the LSMW part. Conversion programs generated from conversion rules leads you smoothly through all these steps of the data migration and it's very very easy to use. It is a free of charge for all SAP customers and partners as it is included within the SAP license only and it is a user-friendly tool. It provides a maximum data consistency. Only basic ABAP knowledge is needed for this particular part or even if you don't have an ABAP knowledge, if you have got the technical knowledge about the table and the fields uh, which we have taken a particular session on that as well earlier. So if you have those knowledge of technical tables and fields then even a functional consultant can create the LSMW of themselves of their own. Then interface for data in a spreadsheet format. So the data which needs to be uploaded in the SAP system from the legacy system has to be has to be created within a spreadsheet format or it can have a text format. So you can prepare your data on that and you can upload those data in the LS with the help of LSMW in the SAP system. It checks check against SAP customizing before processing the import. So it has got a huge advantages and that is why we always prefer LSMW for any kind of a data upload or any it, whether it may be a master data or a transactional data. It can be used even without having a deep knowledge of a BAP as said and it comes with a with the different control functions in the SAP part. So it allows you reusability of data mapping and conversion rules. So the same LSMW can be used multiple times throughout the life cycle of that particular software. So you need to create one time and then it can be created, it can be used for as many number of times you want to use that in the system. So this is a very very important tool for the data migration which does not need any programming from the ABAP side. Even you can transfer your whole previous data with the help of this in the SAP system and it provides you the maximum quality and consistency for while uploading with the different import checks being assigned to it. Moving to the next now is LSMW architecture. Let's discuss how, how LSMW works in the SAP part. So if you talk about how LSMW works, 
The legacy system migration workbench helps you to organize your data migration project and guides you through the process by using a clear sequence of steps. The most common conversion rules are predefined. Reusable conversion rules assure consistent data conversion for different data objects. The LSMW migration process flow covers three important steps and then we'll be discussing about how this particular diagram works all around. First is reading the legacy data from one or the several files like uh, it could be a spreadsheet or it could be a text file or a notepad file. Then converting the data from source format to the target format and then importing the data using standard interfaces like batch input or direct input or it can be a BAPI or it could be an IDOC. So let's discuss this diagram which will give you a more clarity on that. So if you can see in the diagram on the right hand side there is a box one or several files. So these are the options over here from where the file are uploaded. The legacy data on PC or the legacy data on the application server. So from over here from your own desktop or uh, your personal PC you can upload those data to the particular tool and from this particular source option the data has been read over here and then the data is processed at the next stage where the data are read through the help of these files. The, those files which can be taken up from your PC can be an, a spreadsheet, it can be a text file also. Now once the data has been taken up over here, it has been read by the tool in this part, then those particular data have been transferred to the convert data. So in the convert data, the source format gets converted to the target format in the convert data option because there are certain fields which we need to map how those data will be posted in the SAP system. So what we do is in between we, we do the structuring and then we do the field mapping and on the basis of those field mapping the, the source file gets converted in a, in a different target format file. So it gets converted to the convert data and then we can have a preview of the convert data over here in the converted data part with the help of the conversion rules and once those converted data are okay then uh, a batch input session is created and those batch are to be executed so that the data can be posted in the SAP system. So those any of these processes can be used to post the data into the SAP system. It can be done with the help of a batch input session like a standard interface from Excel to the SAP or it could be a direct input processing can be done or it could be an IDOC which is an intermediary document for posting the, the data from the legacy system to the SAP system or there could be any other way outs as well. So the best and the most common part which is used for posting the data with the help of LSMW is batch input processing. So what happened in this case is the, day, the file has been picked up from your from your particular system and they had been read and then those particular files are converted as per the field mappings and then the converted data we have a look or preview of that and if feels everything is fine then we process it at the next level and when you process it to the next level or next step then a batch input is created and once a batch input is created we go and we process that batch input session so as you create those batch input session it will be executed and the data will be posted into your system and the data will be uploaded so this is how this architecture works so before that we need to map one to one fields how the legacy data will be taken up in the sap in which field what particular data has to be has to be taken up has to be looked. So this is how your LSMW architecture works. Moving to the next is more detailed part which will give you a more more understanding is 
convert data with LSMW in detail. So what happened is this file has been uploaded from over here, the local PC file, the file gets processed from over here in the system and here the data is converted. So data conversion take place over here and if you move on below the file on your application server source is structure definition so we define the structure over here and on the basis of the structure the file has been picked and then it has been processed over here in the data conversion part where ultimately the file has been processed from the source format to the target format. So the file has to be has to be changed and accordingly the convert as per the mapping and the conversion rules which has been defined for that particular tool part and then those particular transaction or the data gets flown into the SCP system. So this is how the data flow from with the help of LSMW. Now moving on to the import methods. They are basically these are the four different import methods with the help of which the data can be can be taken up in the SAP system and the SAP system with the help of uh, these different methods from the legacy system part. So one is a batch input, another is a direct input and then method for a business object which is known as BAPI which is a which is an advanced business application process and then there is an IDOC technique. So IDOC is intermediate document which is uh, which post the data on real time into the SAP system. So moving to the next, we'll be going for a practical LSMW where we'll be creating an LSMW with the step to step uh, with one of these particular import methods. So the method which is mostly been used in majority of cases is batch input session. So we'll be uploading the data, we'll be creating an LSMW and we'll see how those data are uploaded into the SAP system with the help of batch input processing. So if you move on to the next part that is a practical scenario where we'll be creating an LSMW that is legacy system migration workbench for creating GL master data that is the tra standard transaction code for that is FS00. Now moving on to before LSMW, one thing one should be clear to you is how a standard transaction works. For the one for which you are looking for data migration. For example, if you are going for a GL master data creation, you must be know, knowing that how this FS00 works and what are the different fields you need to fill for creating a GL master. So you must have a clear understanding of that. That will give you a more and better picture and understanding of LSMW into the system. So moving on to the next, for creating the LSMW, we need to move on to the SCP system, how that can be done. So LSMW, they are creating LSMW step by step. They are basically 14 steps to create LSMW so that the data can be migrated from the legacy system to an SCP system. So what happened in this case is these 14 steps are the steps so as to create a program for upload. There could be different program or there will be different programs for different transactions and different master data. You cannot have one program for everything. If you want to upload the general ledger master data, there will be a different program for that if because the standard transactions are different. So if a standard transactions are different, you need to create that much of the programs for the standard transactions. So for GL master data, we'll be creating one LSMW program. Similarly for customer master, for vendor masters, you need to create separately. If you want to go for the transaction level, then for each transaction for which you are looking for uh, uploading the data, you need to create LSMW program for them as well. So these are the 14 steps which you can see on your screen and we'll be going to them one by one and we'll be creating an LSMW in detail so that it will give you an understanding and learning and you can create your own LSMW in your system and you can process those things. Because as a functional consultant, 
LSMW is a must. So the steps are over here. Maintain object attributes. Maintain source structure. Then maintaining the source fields. So these are the source related data from where the data will be coming up. Then maintaining the structure relation. You need to maintain the structure. And then maintain field mapping and conversion rules. So uh, again the field has to be mapped against the legacy system data. So if in from the legacy system data there could be different kind of a fields or data which would be coming up into the SAP part. So in which fields which data has to be taken up or to be stored has to be mapped in this particular LSMW program and accordingly the conversion rule has to be defined. Then maintaining fixed value, translations and user defined routines. Then a specify file. A specify file basically means that you need to to assign the file from your PC that whether it can be a spreadsheet or it could be uh, a text file whichever you want to and those file which has been specified over here need to be tested from the next steps that is from 7 to 14 is basically uh, a data upload practical part where the file has to be assigned uh, has to be specified and in the next step then the file has to be assigned to the structure then in the next stage the data will be read from the file and we'll see how the data are displayed and then if the data is okay then we'll move for the conversion so that the source file will get converted in the target file and will display the target file also that what is the structure and how they display in the system are those similar as per the source file to be uploaded or not. And if everything goes right, then we can create a batch input session and then we can run and batch input session and the data get transferred or uploaded into the live into the SAP system. So these are the 14 steps which we'll be moving up into the we'll be doing one by one in the SAP system. So let's move on to the SAP system and create an LSMW for the same. So the transaction code for creating an LSMW is nothing else but LSMW only. So we'll be creating a particular LSMW for GL master data upload. So we'll be moving to the SAP system. What you need to do is you need to execute the transaction LSMW. Enter. So as you enter, you can see that the system takes you a screen and the screen over here is legacy system migration workbench. So what I will be doing is what to create a new LSMW. First, we need to assign a project. So for creating a new, you need to move over here to this new entry over here, create entry. So once you click onto this, it will ask you for a project name. So you are supposed to assign a project name over here. Suppose I assign the project. Project uh, underscore IBM. And you can even name it as the same. Over here also. Enter. And then once you enter the project, the system will ask you about the project sub project name so the sub project over here is suppose I am creating GL so I will be writing it as GL underscore master which will relate me that this relates the sub project relates to the GL master data or even if you want you can name it as accounting which will relate it to the accounting department and then in the object part we can assign GL master that we will be creating over here in it so this is the sub project we have assigned. So as we moved on to the screen that is legacy system migration workbench. Now we need to go to the create entry over here as you can see on to the uh, header over here on the screen create. So we'll go and click on to the create entry now. So once you click on to the create entry the system asks you to create the project. So you need to name the project as the project name has to be assigned. So suppose I name it as project 01. And even if you want, you can put the description of the project as well. 
whatever the description you want to take it as like I am taking it as LSMW demo enter then you can put the sub project so sub project I am relating it to accounting as we are working on the accounting part same can be assigned over here to this and then we can click on to the enter again and once you click on to this in this object part you should assign that which particular master data or transaction you are going to create the LSMW for for example I am going to create GL master so I will be putting it as create GL master as the heading so you need to define these three part in the first part and the create one you need to give the project name then you need to assign the pro sub project and then you need to assign the object the object which you will be creating now you can go and you can click on to this right click mark over here or you can continue or you can click on to the enter as well so once you click on to the right button you can see that now the projects has been created over here so these three different projects project sub project and object we have assigned the project basically is an ID with a maximum of 10 character to name your data transfer project. If you want to transfer data from several legacy system, you may create a project example for as we have created project 01 for every legacy system. The sub project which is again an ID which you have to assign which has a maximum accounting character of a maximum character of 10 which is used for further structuring attribute purpose and the object is an ID with a maximum 10 character to name the business object which we would be going and creating it in the SAP system so now once we have defined these three part on the screen we can move on and we can execute this step so once you execute the next screen come up to you with the steps in the LSMW data migration part so you can see there are different steps on the screen which we need to go and create one by one. So moving on to the first step in this which we need to create first of all is to maintain object attributes. So we need to select this step over here the first step and then we need to move to execute and execute this step. So once you execute this step you can see that the object GL master has been taken up from the initial screen which we have defined and create GL master is a description of that and even in that you can assign the data transfer that is once or it can be done periodically as you want so you can go to this change display because right now in a display mode we first need to go and we need to click on to this change option over here and we need to take this in the change mode So now we'll, be, uh, we'll need to click on this display change option. So once you click it will change uh, the screen will change in the change mode now from the display part as you can see and even if you want you can change the object description now. Even you want you can decide the data transfer as to be one time activity or it can be used for periodically as well. So whatever needs to be decided that is a business call as they want to go for. But normally we take it as a periodically for those things which uh, maybe seem like they can be used in the future again. So we, uh, we accordingly select the option once only or periodically. So the GL master is something that suppose we want to create multiple GL again in the future we can go and we can use this particular program tool LSMW for future references as well. So I'll be taking this as a periodic option over here. Now moving on to the next is you can see over here there are different methods. One is a direct input or batch then there is a BAPI then there is an intermediate document number of different options are there. One is standard batch so a standard batch means a standard upload program can be created over here. The next is batch input recording. Here you can create a recording of your own of the standard transactions and a program can be created for that so as to be uploaded and this can be done even by the functional consultant as well. 
whereas if you move on down business object methods that is a BAPI so this is used for upload data again in case of certain advanced cases where uh, where the thing has to be number of different advanced things has to be taken up then intermediate document any inbound IDOC function module can be used to process the data so based on those requirements how the business needs what are their needs and how they want the data to be taken up accordingly the methods has to be decided so it is if it is a, a standard master we can find it in the first method otherwise we can try for a BAPI or IDOC if the required is a custom very custom one then we can go for recording as well so we'll be going for a batch input recording because we just need to uh, to create a program on the basis of the standard program for upload so there is no problem in that so what we'll be doing is now we'll be moving on to this batch input recording and we'll be assigning the recording over here the recording name has to be assigned so the recording name I am assigning over here is like ZFS00 just as a standard transaction and uh, putting a Z uh, ahead of them which will let us know that for which particular recording this has been used now moving on to the next is more recording or recording overview so we need to go on to the if you move on to recording overview you can see now over here we can go for a recording of the standard transaction so once you move on to this recording overview what we need to do is we need to record the standard transaction over here and whatever the recording will be done and what are the different different technical tables and fields are there which will be coming up while the recording will be captured by the system and those those things has to be looked up how we will be mapping those things with the legacy system data so we'll be moving up to the new part over here we need to create a new recording so we need to go and click on to the new recording as we click you can see the screen over here recording so we can write it over here as ZFS00 and then you can put the description create GL master and then you can click on to continue so once you click on to the continue the system asks you the transaction code what is the standard transaction code of which you want an LSMW to be created or a program to be created so the standard transaction for GL master upload is FS00 so as you assign this particular transaction code and you click on to the OK it will trigger you to that particular standard transaction screen and there you need to create a GL for this so moving on to the next continue now you can see on the screen that the transaction has been called up and now we'll be creating the recording for it and we need to assign the GL number over here which need to be created so the GL which we will be creating now over here is suppose 100000 for and once you have taken the GL number over here and the company code on this we need to go to new so once you click on to the new you can see now that the the asset group over here is has been taken over as fixed asset you need to select the profit and loss or balance sheet whichever has to be taken suppose I select the balance sheet and then you need to assign the the GL name over here so the GL name has to be taken over here and then over here also we have taken the name of the GL description needs to be taken up over here so once you have taken this now we'll move to the next next tab so in the next tab now we need to select uh, we are creating an asset so for asset we need to select the reconciliation account over here as assets then we need to move on down the line and we have to select the line item display now moving next if you drag this page down there are certain sort keys if you want any sort key to be taken up you can again select those sort key from over here as well suppose I select the posting date and then we can move on to the next screen now that is create bank and interest 
So in this you need to select the field status group. Now so suppose the field status group which we need to take is G067. So that is what we have taken up over here on the screen. So now we can go and we can save the screen and your GL will be created and even the recording is saved. So you can see now on the screen once you click on to the save option you will find that what are the different fields which has been triggered while creating a GL account in the for the furniture part. You can see over here that this is the GL number which you can see over here on the screen and this is the company code S A K N R is the transaction uh, is the field name then again the company code the field field name is bookers again moving down then we have assigned number of different things to it like the group has been assigned to it profit center has been assigned to it then we have assigned the short text to it then the long text to it then we moved on to the INR part we assigned the reconciliation account then we assigned the uh, the line item display and this is the sort key and then moving down further we have assigned the field status group to it. So this is how you need to create your own uh, different recordings suppose and now once we have created the recording we need to go and we need to double click onto this over here. So once you double click you can name it. So for easy understanding so this refers to GL number which will make it easier for you to remember GL number the same you can put in the description part as well enter okay you cannot have any spaces in between in the first part so you need to take it over here or you can put an underscore to it and in the description part it's alright no problem and the default value you can take it off because we don't know any default value we will be taking our will be assigning our own values later on because once a GL has been created with the same number you can create it again. So you need to create a different number every time. Now moving on to continue so you can see over here this particular field has been assigned with GL number. Similarly you can take this over here and you can assign this as company code the same you can copy to the description and if you want you can take the default value you want you can hide it as well if you even want you can do the same thing over here now moving further down the line these are the two fields which we filled on the very first part if you go and check those things again on the next part you can see over here this was the GL which we just created in the first part we assigned these two things and in the next part then we assigned the group and then we assigned the balance it account. So this is the first two field which we have taken up GL account and the company code then the next fields comes up is the account group which we have assigned. So that is over here account group is 1000 double click on this and you can assign the account underscore group and you can again copy the same thing from over here to the next part enter and that has been assigned now moving to the next over here is this is the next part is now after the group is the balance sheet so this refers to the balance sheet so we can take that over here balance sheet underscore same we can copy and we can assign in the below okay Moving to the next now is the furniture account so you can check back again this furniture refers to the short text and this furniture refers to the long text. So the short text can be assigned over here to it. The same can be copied in the next part for description and then you can take the long text. Same can be copied in the next part. Then you can move on over here. This is the currency. And you can copy. Enter. Now moving to the next after this what we did was in the control data INR then we assigned the reconciliation 
account for account type so that is what this a is this is reconciliation account so again you can put an underscore onto this you can take the same over here moving to the next now is after this we took uh, the next part was the line item display and then the sort key so the next over here is line item display entered then the next we took was the sort key and that is what you need to take over here accordingly and moving down the line the next part was after this we have assigned is field status group so we can move over here to field status group so you can see now that we have assigned whatever the fields we have filled while creating the GL those fields has been taken up over here even in case you want more fields to be taken for other GLs like I have just created for fixed assets when you will be going for creating for revenues or expenses GL you would be needing more fields which you need to assign for taxes and all those things in that case you can what you can do is you can capture all the fields so you need to click on each of them once you click on each of them those fields will be selected for uh, the conversion program part and you can select all those different fields from over here FS00 transaction and those fields will be taken up uh, in the in this create recording part over here so right now I have taken a limited field because I need to create only for the asset part if you need to create all the master data GL master data whether uh, it is for asset customer vendor or it could be for expenses or revenue or income you can create an extended GL master with covering everything every fields so that you can have an extended list of fields and whichever is required you can you can take the data in that so now you can save this part because we have renamed it so with the with these particular names it will be easier for you to remember so now we can go and we can save this screen and you can see the data is saved so this is what the first part which we have completed so once I've moved on to the back once I have click on to this back option you can see now the recording has been created ZFS00 with this transaction and the owner is this moving back now and now we can again save it and then we can move back so now you can see automatically the system moved from first step to the second and you can see the last action over here the the details have been recorded that when this particular first step has been taken place so once you complete this first step successfully the system automatically takes it to the next step so now you can see we are on the very next step in this so now moving up to the second step is maintain source structure so moving on to this we need to select this particular second option and we need to execute this so now you can see over here the structure as of now is blank what we need to do is we need to go and click on to this change option over here because right now it is in the display part so you have to take care each and every step has to be taken up in the change mode whenever it is in uh, it, it is in a display part so we need to click on to this the first part display change so as to bring it in the change mode so once I click on to this you can see now the display mode has been moved to change source structure so once this has been done now we need to create this structure for the program so we need to go to create a structure so once you click on to create a structure now we'll be assigning over here is GL underscore master the same thing can be copied as a description on the below part as well and you can click on to 
continue. So this is the name of the structure that we have created. Okay. It says does not permit to a second or the third position. Okay. So we need to take something else. So we can take it as ZFS00 as same and we can consider it changed that it is the name of the target. Okay. So we can take it as ZZL master. So you can see now we have taken the structure name as ZGL master and the name of the description is GL master on the system. So this is what you need to create a structure from the create option. And once the structure has been created, now you can save this screen. So the source structure is used to design the hierarchy of the file to be uploaded. So once it has been saved, the data is saved now. The structure has been defined on the screen and now we can move back to the same number of steps filled. So we have moved back to the step fields now and you can see now again the system auto automatically moves from the second field, second step to the third step now. So moving on to the third step now is maintain source fields. In this screen the fields which will be uploaded from the text file can be maintained here. The fields with identical names are taken as the key. If you Go and execute this third step now. But select this third step and then move on to execute. So once I executed the third step, you can see now this shows you LSMW display source structure. Now in this, we need to go and you need to click on to the change first. So once I click on to the change, now you can see I have got number of different options over here on the screen while in the display part these options were not there. So now once we are in the change mode now we need to go to the table maintenance part. Okay what it says is position the cursor on a structure. So you need to put the cursor on the structure first and then you need to go to the table maintenance. So now in the table maintenance part, you need to assign the field names. What are those different fields which has to be taken up in the program part? And what are their type, whether they are a number, whether they are a character or whether they, they will be a date, what it will be. And then what is the length of those fields and the description of the fields has to be taken. So now over here, we'll need to assign those part. So to assign those part now, we need to, let's see, go back again. We can create an Excel file for that first so that accordingly we can copy paste those things over there on the structure, creating the structure. So suppose we move on to an Excel and do certain working. Okay, change. Now let's move on again to the table maintenance. So you can see there are four tab four columns over here. One is for the field name. So let's take up over here on the screen. Field name. The next come up is the type. And the next come up with the length. And the last one is for the description. So now you need to select each of these which we need to be taken up in the SAP part. So now moving back for all those different table and fields, we need to go to object overview list. Now these are the different different targets which we need to take or you can take it as different field names. So you can copy this different field names over here from this part to the field name part. So how we got to this, we simply went on to the same screen and we click on to this object overview. So once you click on to the object overview, you can go to the list 
and once you go into the list you can go drag it further down and we'll find that these are the different different field names which we need to be taken up in the SAP system so those are from GL number till the last and then we can move on to the description also the same description will be taken up in the same part so the description will be over here as usual and you can see the type now the type over here is mostly a character couple of them are different so that can be taken up from over here to this character okay thing I have taken wrong I have to take it from the third one So this is what we have taken up now. Moving on to the length, you can even find the length of each of the fields in the system. So you need to take those length into the SAP system as well for the program. We need to maintain the length so that it doesn't exceed the length. And you can convert this length in the text format for easy understanding. okay so now moving up to the next now is we can copy these different things into the same option which we have to go for we were in the third step so we can now go and execute this option we need to put the cursor on the source field and then we need sorry we need to go to the change we need to put the cursor on the source field and then we need to go to table maintenance So now what we can do, we can let's check back the Excel file. For characters, we can assign C as you can see in the type. There is a for character there is C, for numeric there is N, and for hexadecimal contents there is X. For dates, there are different formats. So what we will be needing is for characters, we would be needing to change it to C now. So suppose I change it to C and the same I can copy it over here to the next also Sorry. so this is what we need to assign we have done that now what we can do is we can copy these together from over here to this particular field directly and you can see now it has been taken up in the screen so what I did is first I prepared the excel file for the same I have taken all the different fields name which we have uh, taken up while recording and then we have renamed even after saving the recording also for better understanding and those same fields have been taken up their type has been taken whether they have been a character or a number or a date or or maybe uh, a different things then we have taken up the length what is their maximum length which can be allowed in the SAP part from the screen as we have seen and then we have taken the description also the same thing as it is all together has been copy pasted onto this table now and now we can go and we can save this screen so once now this screen has been saved we can go back so you can see now on the screen as we saved that particular table now those table and those fields those particular fields have been updated in the source file over here so now there is a GL which is a character with a character of 10 then there is a company code character there is a field length is 4 so that has been defined now we can save this also so the source field is used to identify whether a certain record should go to the specific structure or not that is why the source field can be easily maintained in the form of a table maintenance form and that is what we have created in the table format and now we can move back to the next step that is maintain structure relations now moving to the next the structure which are needed for the processing of the data need to be assigned here the object may contain many structures and many source structures 
the mapping between the source and the target structure should be done after careful checking of those in the SAP part. So how we can go and we can map these things, let's see. We can execute this step over here now. So we can go to now from the display part to the change part. And then we can go and we can save this screen over here. We don't need to do anything much in it. Now we can go back. And you can see now the system automatically moves from the to the next step because we don't need to do much on that. We just need to change and save so that that particular uh, the structured relations gets updated with the fields. That's all. Now moving on to the next step is mapping field, maintain field mappings and conversion rules. In this step, we need to assign the source fields to the target fields which is very important and define how the filled contents will be converted. So if you move on to this particular step now and execute it, you can see on the screen now there are different fields which we have defined in the source part earlier with the help of the table. These are the different fields. Now these table, these fields need to be assigned to the target field in the SAP. All fields of all target structure need to be defined which we which we have just selected in the previous step will be displayed over here as you can see the different field has been displayed to you which we have just defined in the table. For each target field the following information is displayed on your screen. One is if you go to the field description is there then now over here number of different things are over here if you can see one is termed as your field documentation another is your okay before moving to that we can we can convert this from display to change let's see so once you convert it from display to change now what we need to do is we need to click on to this create documentation Okay, so these on the first part is the are the field descriptions as you can see on the screen, and these different field descriptions need to be assigned with the source field over here on the screen. Assign source field, and the next option over there is the rule type. Also, you can define the rule type uh, for with the help of this fixed value and translations. If there is any fixed values to it or uh, that does not need to be maintained again and again that can be maintained over here in the initial or the fixed value part also and then even there are the options of coding as well. So now how, let's see how these field mappings are done and the conversion rules are defined. So if you go for the first part that is the GL name we need to click on to the uh, put the cursor on to the GL number over here on the field and we need to go and click on to the source field. So once I need I click onto the source field that means I would be assigning the source field to the GL number field. So as I click onto the source field now you can see there is a list of different source fields onto the screen and for GL number I will be double click on this particular source field. So as I double click onto it you will see that it has been assigned with this particular path. Similarly you need to assign all these different fields with this source field and this is how the mapping has to be done of the source field with the target field. So if I now put the cursor on the company code and again I go to the source field. Now for company code I would be taking this company code over here. This is the relation which I have defined. So I will be double click onto the company code now and you can see now the company code has been assigned to it. Similarly I will put the cursor onto the account group and again I will go to the source field and now in the source field I will be assigning double click onto the account group or you can put the cursor and you can select with this. Both the options are there. So I have selected the account group over here. Similarly I, assign, I clicked onto the balance sheet and I now selected the balance sheet. So similarly you need to select all of the different sort 
the source fields with the target field need to be assigned. So now assigning the long text. Similarly, I will be assigning the currency. Now moving down further. Similarly, I will be assigning the reconciliation, then the line item. This is how you need to do the mapping of the fields to fields. So this is how I have done the mapping right now. And now once this mapping has been done, you can move on and you can save this screen. So note some fields are preset by the system. These fields are called technical fields are marked with default settings. The coding for these fields is not displayed when first entering the field mapping. It can be displayed via display variant. However, you don't need to do that as of now. You just need to map the fields one to one as we did on the screen. And now we can go and we can save this screen over here. So as we have saved, the data has been saved. And now we can go back. So you can see now we have moved to the next screen. Uh, next step now from maintain field mapping and con conversion rule now we have moved on to maintain fixed values, translations and user defined routines. So in this there are three reusable functions are maintained. One is fixed values, another is translations and the third is user defined routines. If you go and we can execute this part you will find three different options over here. The fixed values. Fixed values are values which are fixed across the project. The very common example of that is the company code. Your company code will always be one and which will always have a fixed company code number. That is suppose 1000 or maybe it could be 1200. So in that case if you want you can assign those particular fixed values over here to the company code. Like you put the cursor under the fixed value, you move on to the new and over here you can assign that company code. So like I take it over here as bookers which is the technical name company code enter. So if you open the options over here you will find bookers company code. Similarly you will find many other options onto the screen which can be done the same way. So if the value changes later on we can only change at one place that is in the fixed value instead of changing each and every object. So we don't need to maintain the company code data in the excel file once you define the fixed value over here. Now moving on to the translation. Here you can maintain the fixed translation for your any legacy field. And the translation can be assigned to the field in the field mapping and the conversion rule. The translation can be one to one or one to many as well. If you go for an example of such like is again company code could be there that is one to one. Again the, there could be many others like values in class could be there. There could be con country key that is US to US. So these are different things. However we don't need those things while creating a GL master. So we'll not be taking those things over here. Just for a discussion perspective so as to give you an understanding. Now moving on to the user defined routines. These are the user defined subroutines that are used in the object for processing the data which can be done. So we'll not be going through that. That will make the things more com complicated to understand for you. So better is to make it more simpler and easier. So all these three different functions maintained above our reusable rules which you can go back and you can assign it again and you can reuse which are the which are valid for all the objects in one particular projects. So now we can go and we can save this part. So this is what we have defined. So so define the company code over here we need to put the cursor and then we can go to this change edit and then over here we can define the value now. 
So the length, output length of the company code is 4 and it will always be in the character and then we can define the value that is 9000 for the company code. So the company code in which we are creating the LSMW is 9000. Accordingly you will be assigning your own company code which you have created and for which you are going to create the LSMW for and then we can click on to this continue. So once it has been continued now we can go and we can save it. So this is how we have defined and once you have assigned the value to the company code now we can go back. So once you move back to the steps now we can find that we have moved to again to the next step. So we have completed the first six steps as of now maintain object attributes where we completed the recording and all and then maintain source structure where we define the sources and maintain source field we define the table where we took all the source fields with the description and the the type of data it will be and what will be the length of that then in maintain a structure relation we define the relationship of the structure with that and then in field mapping we define the field mapping of the source uh, fill with the target fill and in maintain fixed value translation and user define we define the fixed value for the company code. Now moving on to the specify files. Now in this case we need to create a file an excel file which has to be uploaded into the SAP system. So for that again we need to go back to the SAP part. So these are the different fills which you need, we need to take to create a file. So let's create a file in a new worksheet. So what we will be doing is we'll be creating a file so you need to take each of these different fields in a different column so as to create the file so this will give you an idea how a template or a sample file is to be created which need to be uploaded. So this is your template where we need a GL number first as per the data upload template. So we'll be taking the GL number over here. We need we, we would be taking the company code then the account group in which the GL has to be created. Now suppose we create a data also over here. How we can create it? Uh, let's go to FS00. So this was the GL which we have created furniture. Suppose after furniture now I want to create the next that is uh, number of different GLs in one go. Suppose I take it over here as uh, these are the sequence of uh, different GL which I need to create into the SAP and I don't want to create it manually because they are, these are just examples. There will be thousands or even in hundreds GL which need to be created while going for a go live in the SAP part or migrating to SAP in one go. So those all can be done in while creating the template in this format. So suppose we have already created, created the furniture. Now I want to go and create building. Then I want to go for creating land. Then I would be wanting to create plant and machinery. Then there could be um, there could be hardware, and then there could be software, or hardware and software can be taken up in one go as well. Then there could be vehicles. There could be um, there could be number of different other assets as well, plant and machinery, vehicles, land, building. So this is something which I have created right now. Now I want to create uh, the data with the help of LSMW. So we'd be taking the group over here as well, the group name that is one thousand. So the same group will be carried for all of them. Then moving to the balance sheet, we need to cross this. So cross basically means that the balance sheet will be selected. Then we need to assign the sort text. So these will be the sort text which I will be taking over here. 
and the same I will be taking in the long text also because the company code over here is different the company code is 1000 which we need to take now moving on to the next is the currency that will be USD or you can take any other currency for that manner moving to the next is now the reconciliation so in reconciliation we need to assign A so that is what we have taken up now moving on to the LSM line item display in the line item display again we need to put the cross mark cross means that particular option will be selected for it and the sort field uh, need to be checked what we want so that would be 001 and then the field status group that is Z067 so this is your data how you need to create I've just created a sample data how uh, an upload template file will be created for data upload so this is the structure in which you need the data and there could be thousands of GL masters that could be created in this format and can be uploaded in one go we are just creating just a few just to check how our LSMW has been created and is that successful or not so what I would be doing now is I will be taking just two of them as a as a preliminary checking my LSMW in a text format because I would be uploading it in the text format part so now I will be moving on to a text file so we need a text file over here we can open it and save the data in it and now save it so I have pasted the data in it and now I am saving it right now so once you have saved this file over here now we'll be moving to the SAP screen and now we will be specifying the file to it so as we are on the screen for specifying the file so first we need to go to the change option okay so we can go to now over here first is the is the change option over here from the display part so once we have moved on to the change option with this display and change click now we need to go to the legacy data because we need to pick up the files from our PC system so we need to select the PC so we need to double click onto the first option that is legacy data on the PC front end so as you double click onto this legacy data now you can see a new screen has been generated on this on the system so now we need to select the file from the file option where the file has been stored we need to select that particular file so I would be moving to select the file now we move to enter and then I have selected this new text over here and you can name the file over here as well that what activity we are creating suppose this is GL master upload so this is what you need to assign so now in that you need to select this data for one source structure then in the delimiter part you need to select the tabular tabulator and then in the file structure you need to select this option and in the file type it will always be record end maker text file and then in the code page it will be ASCII and then you can go and you can click on to the continue so your file you can see now has been taken up over here so you can save the screen over here now so now once the save is where it has been saved the data is saved now and we can go back so this is how we have specified the file now we'll move to the next step that is to assign the file so you need to select this option over here and then you need to go to execute and you need to go to change option over here and you can just have to save it nothing else saved now we can go back so the data has been assigned now so it automatically get assigned to the screen to which it want to assign to so you can see now over here the file has been assigned to the source structure the same file has been assigned to the source structure now now going back the next is to read the data 
so for read data we need to go and execute read data so as you execute this now you will see that the new screen is there and we need to just click on to execute and this will show us how many data are read from the text file okay remember allow so you can now see on the screen that the two data has been read and written also not written is zero that means whatever the data we have assigned we have taken only first two line item of it that means we have taken only two GL number that is two data has been taken and those two data has been read successfully and those two has been written as well that means as of now we are going correct we have taken the file with two data and the two data has been read successfully if there would have been any deviation then we had to go back and we had to check what went wrong now going back again one step back to the steps so now you can see now it we have moved from read data to display read data now we need to execute the display read data over here on the screen and as you click on to the execute the new screen come up to display read data and you can click to continue or enter on the screen and it will show you the data which has been read by the system from the file so you can see now the data has been read over here on the screen to you and if you want to go and cross check this you can click on to any of them of the two items so suppose I click the first one and now you can see the GL number is correct the company code is coming correct and the length is also over there then the balance sheet is also coming correct the short text is building long text is building the currency is coming correct the reconciliation account is also been taken correctly the length is also taken correctly and this so nearly every field is coming correct even if you want you can check the same with the your excel file as well just to validate that everything has been corrected uh, has been picked correctly by the system so these are the different fields which we have assigned and those particular fields have been taken up over here on the screen you want you can check the currency over here is USD and the same currency over here as USD has been applied building building has been taken up over here building building and uh, if you go up the GL number is 100001 so that is what the GL number 100001 is there so it seems like correctly the file as of now is going correct and we are on the correct path so now similarly you can check the second line also so this is what how we can test our own LSMW whether what has been created and what has been mapped from the source to the target file has been correctly mapped or not now even the same thing can be checked over here with the Excel file of yours so 100002 and over here that is it 100002 on the screen so it seems correct now we can go back again one step back and you can see now from the display read data now we have moved to convert data so if you go to convert data so converting to the next step now that is the step number 12 convert data converting the data is the transfer of data from source to target structures based on the conversion routines written in the maintain field mapping and conversion routines so let's execute the convert data step now select the converse data step and then execute so once we execute it take us to the next screen we don't need to do anything in it we just need to execute this particular part also so once we execute now you'll find that there are these are the records which has been called up so if as we have already uploaded the file with two data only so two data has been read over here as a transaction read and the record then the transaction written and records written so this is what we need to check that the data which we have taken up in the file the same number of data has to be read at the time of conversion also we have checked in the previous part that in the source part while reading the data the same number of transactions were read and while transaction time even the same number of transactions should be read also so this is okay fine with the conversion data part now moving back to this step so you can see now the step we have moved to the next now 
that is to display the converted data. So over here the data has been converted in the last step and now we will be displaying the converted data. So now executing display converted data execute now in this particular pop-up screen we need to enter or click on to the right click so you can see now the data which has been converted has been displayed on the screen and this is the data which will be posted into the SAP system so if you want to see any of these two data we can click on that line item and you can check over here the details even the same data you can match with your excel file which you have maintained and by which we have taken the data for the upload so even if you go back you can match your data with the same excel file for a cross verification so this is you have to match it from the third transaction which is important to us that is the GL number company code account group then balance sheet, the short text and the long text, then the currency reconciliation account, A refers to the assets, then X refers to line item display, sort key and then fill the status group. So these are the different fields which we have maintained over here and the same fields has been picked up by the file in the SAP system through the LSMW. So this seems okay to us, then we can go back again and now even if you want you can check the second item also so this is how it has been reflecting on the screen so this looks okay then we can go back again now back to these steps so you can see now we have completed the 12th step also and now we are on the create batch input session so this is one of the method of, uh, of uploading the data that is the batch input that is what we are using for now so you can you need to execute this batch also now to create a batch and with the help of the batch only the data will be uploaded when we'll be executing the batch so once to create the batch we need to select the create batch session and we need to go to execute so once we execute over here we can select this keep check uh, batch input folders so that that particular batch will be stored and it will not get automatically uh, deleted after executing it so it is why I have selected this keep the batch input folders and now we can go and we can execute this so that the batch can be generated into the system and on the basis of the batch the data can be processed so now executing this and we will get a message as you can see one batch input folder with two transactions have been created so once these transactions have been created now we can go and continue and the batch has been generated as you can see with every step the transaction date and the timings has been updated on the screen now we can go back to the, we can go to the last step that is to run the batch input session which is the 14th step which has to be done and this 14th is the most important step by which the data gets posted into the SAP system so whatever the data converted has been now taken up in the batch and as we will be executing the batch those particular transaction will get posted into the system so let's execute the batch now select the run batch input session execute so as we executed you can see there is one batch which has been created that is GL master that has been created at this time the time even can be can be checked and even you can see that two transactions are there now we can select this batch from over here on the left hand side and then we can go to process so once you click on to the process there are couple of options to you one is to process into in the foreground next is with error and the third is at the background so if the data is huge it is always preferred to execute it with background or with error never with foreground if you run it in foreground you will always have to process it manually that's why it is better to go with display errors only so it will display you whenever there is any error in any of the transactions else 
elsewise the data will get posted into the system or if you go for the background the system will get post uh, the data will get posted through the batch input which we have created at the back end so what we will be doing is we'll be executing it with display errors only which will give a better edge if there is any error we can even cross check that and the screen will be populated in case of any error else it will get processed so now we have selected the display error only and now we can go to process and click on to the process part so once I click on to the process now now you can see the next screen generated is processing of batch input session is completed that means our batch has been successfully created and we have been able to create the 2GL account which we have taken up in the file now if you want to see the session overview you can go to this session overview and this shows you that the stick mark shows you that the file has the batch has been processed and over here you can see that there were two transactions and over here the stick mark shows that the two transactions has been successfully processed if there has been any error then in that case that has been reflected over here in the error part so this is how you need to execute the LSMW and this is all about the LSMW how you can create and how you can process those things that's all about LSMW part practice it configure practice take more and more data and prepare more data in the Excel part and try to upload and execute it and see how the data has been processed and has been created into the system. So that is all about it. Thank you.